Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. My husband's got really big fingers. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> Right, that took a turn. Fat-fingered builder, hey? Yes. That doesn't sound very common at all. No, not at all typical for a tradie. I know. It's it's a real problem, isn't it, having fat fingers? Well, it is when it comes <laughs> to using your phone, <laughs> now that we don't have buttons anymore. Well, I actually just got a new iPhone, um, just upgraded my iPhone, and I think the keyboard on the screen has gotten smaller. Yeah, I don't I have agree. particularly. Well, I don't think I've got particularly fat fingers. Well, you got man hands, that's for sure. They're they're a little bit sausagey, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> sausage fingers. But um, I find it reasonably challenging and incredibly bloody frustrating. Frustrating, yeah. Pressing the right letters mm-hmm. and then the words are misspelled, and then it puts you know. Pelican in there instead of paperclip <laughs> or something because autocorrect comes up with some weird thing that I wasn't even trying to say. I can't tell you how many times I've said ducking. Yeah, <laughs> I've never not typed ducking. ducking out of the way. Yes, so um, so sausage fingers. It's a real problem out there in the industry. Uh, it is a problem if you want to use your phone to talk to people, and right? that's the thing because everything is on our bloody smartphones, it isn't is. it? Everything's on our smartphones at our fingertips. And if you've got sausage fingers, you're at a disadvantage. <laughs> so so today's guest has solved the sausage finger problem. <laughs> yes, he has. Pretty much. And he doesn't know that we, uh, we've gone and stuck this on the front of this episode. Yeah, I'm not after sure how Josh is going to feel about this intro. <laughs> I think Josh will be okay because he... <laughs> He uh, was very careful not to use any profanity in this episode. He was. Um, he did very, very well. So uh, we didn't tell him that we can tick the explicit box, but um, we don't need to. Uh, Josh is very professional. And um, he is the co-founder and CEO of a new app for tradies called Good Work. Um, and it's really good. And it's about your work. It works good. But it's not about sausage fingers. It's actually, it's actually about networking, which is probably something else that tradies hate. Um, I hate networking. I like it. You're strange. I but, know. But you are a woman. Women are particularly, um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, we're going suited, back into suited to networking. Just that social. It's just the talking capability. Oh, see, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I talk a lot, but I still suck at networking. Uh, it's just. I don't know. Networking isn't easy, let's face it. And doing it face-to-face can be quite difficult. So having the opportunity Mm. to do so on your phone works for me too. And that's the thing. We're also busy. You like to go off to a networking event to meet some other trades. It's uh, timely. Or, you know, to find a new plumber if your current plumber's let you down or you you need a a sparky or a tiler or Mm. a plaster or someone to add to your list or vice versa if you want to chase some builders and get some more work from them. It can be really hard because what do you do? Like Google them and then send them a letter? Where do you find them? How do you contact them? And how do you know know. if they're any good? And like it's a real pain in the neck. It is. It just makes sausage fingers even worse. (laughs) So Josh and his team have solved the problem. Um, Hooray! Super cool app. Um, we've seen this thing. Um, it's live. It's getting a lot of take up. Um, and as I said on the back end of this episode, the best part I reckon about this app for tradies is it is F R E E free. Costs nothing. It's awesome. Yeah. So thousands of tradies on there already. And it's only been going for, what did you say? 200 days or something. 200 live. days. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so great interview with Josh. You're going to be hearing a lot more from Good Work um, on the podcast and in the group. Um, cool guys, uh, young team, and they're doing some really great stuff for tradies. So uh, jump on in and find out how to solve your sausage finger problem. <laughs> Enjoy. So welcome to the podcast, Josh from Good Work. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having us on. 
Pleasure, pleasure, and I think it's uh, Coxie's pleasure as well. How are you, Nick? I'm well, how are you? Nick, Coxie, where are we Nick going? Coxie, yet? well, I'll pick one and settle on it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I won't repeat my nicknames. I think you've got some that are not for, for uh, family viewing or listening. Josh, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I'm not going to go into my nicknames. We'll just, uh, <laughs> they're not, not fit for the air. Typ- typical blokes nicknames, isn't it? So like, true. Just so derogatory <laughs> and defamatory, such, such the Australian way. Yes, that's uh, you're exactly right. Anyway, we're not talking about nicknames today. We're talking about good work, and uh, we're not talking about, well, good work, because we know all of our listeners do good work, but... Um, if you don't know what good work is, hopefully by the end of today you do, and, and we want to change that and make sure everybody knows about good work. What on earth are we talking about, Josh? Fill us in, mate. Um, yeah, look, good work is essentially uh, a mobile app. Um, it's a networking app that's built just for tradies, um, and really it's just designed to sort of connect trade to trade so that they can share leads, um, post jobs, Uh, and get more work done more often, I guess. That's the premise behind it. Um, And it's totally free, which sort of makes us a little bit different to a lot of the the sort of digital tools that are out there for tradies. So a whole lot of listeners just tuned in properly then when you said it was free. (laughs) Uh, Tradies love a good deal. And uh, I've got a bunch of uh, tradie wingman clients who are quite proud to refer to themselves as um, tightwads, to use the uh, (laughs) the PC language. Uh, So... If it's free, like what? What do they actually get, mate? Why would they? Why would people jump on this thing? Yeah. So look, obviously we're we're early on in the piece, um, but the app allows you to sort of build out a professional profile. So it allows you to showcase your work. Um, it's pretty easy to use. So it's probably about I think it's about eight questions that we ask you at the beginning, which writes you a little bio. Uh, then you can upload some photos of your work, um, and then you're also able to post jobs. And, and this is a really important one you're able to post jobs that are free it's completely free we're not charging you for that uh, for that service um, and what that allows is other members on the network to get in touch um, and apply for that job or, or get in touch and just have a conversation we're all about keeping the network open so we don't close off the interaction we leave it up to the the different trades to interact and I guess what we'd say is they self-organize um, which is a really important one for us um, but the other thing you can also do is that um, it allows you to connect with other other profiles and other trades so that, you know, on that rainy day when you need that sparky in your back pocket, you're able to connect with them. You've already got them um, as a connection and you can get in touch straight away through the app. Yeah, cool. So how did this come about, mate? I mean, it's it's up and running now. People can jump in and, and uh, create a profile and we'll talk more about that towards the end of the episode. Um, but where did this come from? Yeah, look, um, I think where this really came from is that we, uh, myself and the co-founders were were looking into the tradie space and um, we realised that they're probably really underserviced in the types of products, uh, digital products that are out there for them. Um, in a lot of instances, they're quite transactional in the way that these um, some of these other apps and jobs markets are, are put forward, uh, meaning that it's sort of pay for service. Um, everyone's taking a clip of the ticket. And we thought there's a couple of problems that we thought were worthy of solving. And one is that for a lot of tradies, um, work can be quite isolating. So working out on a job site, for example, maintenance plumbers, those guys um, don't really get an opportunity to connect with their peers. They don't get an opportunity to work with other tradies. Um, so how do we, one, reduce the isolation? How do we, two, uh, make them more efficient in sharing job leads? Um, and we think those those were some pretty big problems to solve. Um, and then we looked at sort of the professional services space, right? Those guys have been using digital tools to, to sort of self-organize and to be more efficient in the workspace for years and years, but no one's really focusing that at the trade space. So how do we um, to help, help them do more work more often? I'm interested to know how easy it is to use. Tradies, you know, they push, push for time. They maybe not necessarily tech savvy. Is it an easy app to use? Yeah, it's a very easy app. Um, we've taken a lot of effort and care in trying to make it as simple as possible. Um, so what that means is we've got big buttons. Um, we've done a lot of customer <laughs> testing with um, with lots of tradies because we noticed that lots of tradies have scratched up and smashed up phones. <laughs> um <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, scratched up. Sorry, we've got the guys doing stand up outside uh, the team. So um, they're trying to anyway, distract you, are they, mate? They're he- yeah, they're, heckling that's right. Um, um, so yeah, look, um, 
we've done a lot of testing to make sure that um, it's really easy to use. It probably takes, I would think, about a minute, um, maybe a minute 20 if I'm being really um, out there in terms of setting up a profile. It's really easy. Yeah, right. So we're kind of talking like LinkedIn for tradies. Is that is that sort That's of what we're talking about? Probably. It's probably the best way of describing it is it's, uh, yeah, it's 100% like LinkedIn for tradies. We allow you to self-organize and um, yep. we'll connect with other like-minded tradies, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, but without the uh, ridiculous spamming and, uh, you know, <laughs> arguments right. that happen on LinkedIn these days. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, that's which, right. Which has kind of turned into Facebook for accountants and, and lawyers. 100% it has, yeah. <laughs> Leads to a good question, though. So when we say good work is an app for tradies, who is it that is able to connect with your app? Who's using your app? Am I going to find yeah. a whole bunch of other services on there as well, or is it just tradies? Yeah, it's a, it's a really great question. So we obviously service the, the, I guess, the four main trades that we were talking about. So electricians, carpenters, plumbers, uh, and I've forgotten one more. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, builders and construction, a lot of those guys are the, are the sort of the top, the top trades. Mm -hmm. um, but really importantly, over, over half of our network is made up of a lot of the smaller trades, and that covers everyone from a glazier. Uh, we even have pest controllers on there. Um, hmm. we've got uh, still fabricators and for those guys they're probably the ones that we think are getting a lot of value they're, they're the ones that struggle to connect with other trades to mm. find and share mm. work yep. um, and they're getting a lot of value out of that but that's also with that said also we're seeing lots of carpenters and builders um, you know that are running renovations for example and being able to connect with someone because their regular guy is out of action um, they're able to connect with someone and get the job done sooner mm. yeah that's awesome. So, you know, the app itself probably makes sense to most people listening. Um, certainly makes sense to me, and I think it's a great uh, tool for trade business owners because they, of of all the industries, and, and I've worked with a lot of different industries over the years personally, and I know Coxie's been involved with more than just the building industry. Um, I think it's probably... I don't know, it's like tradies are an afterthought for a lot of software developers as well. I, I speak to people every day that are just frustrated with the offerings out there for job management software and, you know, CRMs and all sorts of platforms that just don't have, you know, field workers and, and people who have multiple techs out in vans and stuff. It just hasn't been developed with them in mind, despite being tagged as a, you know, a service yeah. app or a trade-based app. Um Yours looks a lot different, but I'm I'm curious to know because you guys have done a bit of product testing and you've had focus groups and that sort of stuff. How the 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 thinking might have shifted for people using Good Work, um, and you know, is there a bit of a a turn in the trade market where you know tradies are looking at things a little differently and thinking about their business a little differently? What are you seeing out there, Josh? Yeah, I think um, there certainly is. Um, we're seeing a lot of really young and ambitious guys that are turning to sort of non-traditional tools to organise um, job sites, for example. So we see a lot of the young guys using things like WhatsApp. Um, so that's <laughs> how they're communicating um, across and organising jobs. Um, because of the functionality in something like a WhatsApp, they can take photos, you know, if they've done a job, they can take photos and all of a sudden it's in the stream. The other guys can see what's going on. So... We're certainly starting to see the sort of the trend shift towards more of these digital tools that are probably um, more social than they are, um, I guess, workflow management, for example. Mm. Um, but I think, yeah, to your point, you're exactly right. Some of the products that are out there have not really been designed with tradies in mind. They're very complex, um, require multiple steps along the way to sort of to use them. Um, and inevitably, they end up, you know, a lot of tradies end up not using them because they're just too complex. Yeah. And, and I've seen a number of threads in the Tradies in Business group uh, with people talking about exactly that. It's like, oh, what's everyone else using? Because I'm using this platform and I'm finding it really hard and time consuming. And I've set it all up and now I think I'm just going to ditch it. And, and I watch all these threads and think, no, <laughs> stick with it, please. You know, you've got to yeah. use tech um, and it can be frustrating and difficult. And sure, there's no perfect um, one size fits all solution. It's kind of like motorbikes, really. It's why I need more than one. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, it, but it is a, a game changer. And, and again, I'm curious to know what, uh, 
what observations you and the team have made, Josh, of people using good work? You know, has it has it been a game changer for people? Yeah, I think so. Look, um, some of the other interactions that really took us by surprise, we always wanted to make the platform open and allow people to self-organise. Um, so some of the other platforms that are out there around jobs will actually close off the interaction. So they will, won't allow Tradey to connect with Tradey. Um, and the reason for that is obviously there's a, there's a commercial opportunity there for them. But we acknowledge straight away that tradies are, are smart. They're, they're not silly people, right? They're small business owners. And the moment that you and I have worked together was, um, I've already got your phone number, so I'm not going to go back to the app ever again to make that connection. I already mm-hmm. have you in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And why would I give my hard-earned money to you when I've already, we've made the connection once already. So yeah. um, we left it open. And what's really surprised us is the amount of guys that are using the in-app messaging function to connect and just sort of, hey, mate, uh, are you available? I've got a job around your area. Um, and they're actually using it how it's meant to be used. And I think that's, you know, that's where we want to get to. We've, we've, we've seen guys that are sending messages to each other across the network where they've found them. Um, they've obviously worked together at a point in time, um, had lost touch, and then he spotted his profile on the Good Work app and said, hey, mate, I thought I'd get back in touch, um, saw you on the app, and uh, it's good to have you in my back pocket. So those are the sorts of interactions that, that we're seeing um, that are happening where guys are, are building out their network because they understand that by having a strong network, um, it means they've got a stronger business, they're able to grow their business faster, they're able to share leads and and sort of collaborate on, on jobs. Mm. I love the way, so I'm talking now with my builder hat on, and it can be really hard to find tradies that you can trust and rely on to get the job done. And often when you get, you know, invariably as your business expands, you need extra support with your subcontractors. And it can be really like, where do you go to find those people? If it's not a mate that you went through and did your trade with or somebody you went to school with or somebody you've tripped along the way into, there's just no real way to find them. And this really services that need you can build a relationship with those people before you even begin work you have the opportunity to view photos um and and build that network because who's got time to network especially tradies unless we're down at the pub on a friday afternoon because we're buggered and and you know you don't want to talk about work then so i love the functionality of it being in my back pocket i can i've got it with me any time of the day i can have a quick flick make a connection and we can move forward to that part, you know, when we the job's ready to be posted. We do have some connections, but also then, Josh, if you can take us through the posting of the job, what does that look like? How do we make the connections once the job is posted? Yeah, so I think, well, there's, well, there's really two ways. So you can connect with someone without having a job posted. So that's, um, so you've got them in, in your back pocket. Um, but in the instance that you haven't found someone through connecting, you can obviously post that job. Um, it's pretty simple. It's about six steps. It just asks you a series of questions around, um, you know, a job title. So what, who, what trade are you actually looking for? Um, it'll ask you the different types of skills that they uh, that you need for that job. Um, we then decided also to put in a couple of additional things which we think will help shape the conversation because it's really about getting the conversation started. Mm. Um, none of the details in that job card are set in stone. Um, so the things that we've added in there is that is is the job running for you know a number of hours? Is it uh, running for days or is it running for a number of weeks? Mm. Um, and so that gives the person viewing the job a bit of an understanding. Is this long-term, short-term, or, you know, how soon do you need me to start? We also have the feature that you can put in ASAP. So if you've got an emergency and you need someone to fill that job straight away, um, you can hit ASAP. Um, and then we also ask some other additional questions around um, what's the hourly rate um, that you're expecting. And we, and we give a range. So we don't necessarily say it's going to be a set rate. We allow them again to negotiate what that rate is because different people have different rates and different levels of experience. Yep. Um, but we're trying to give them enough information that it's a guide within that job ad. Um, so there's, yeah, there's the hourly rate. There's obviously the duration. Um, and then we obviously put in a, a location. So um, the sort of approximate location, um, and then we have a, a section that's sort of free text where any additional information can be sort of um, put into the job ad. So if there's any specifics that really need to go in there, uh, driver's license required, those sorts of things, um, they can be added in the free text. And then you just hit post and basically the job ad is up um, and uh, it will appear in the in the jobs uh, section of the app. That's fantastic. Nice. It does sound easy. Mm. 
uh, and and we have seen the app, and it, and it looks pretty cool. Like it's, it does have big thumb buttons uh, <laughs> for for those of us with fat thumbs, and um, and it's just I don't know. It's just kind of clean. There's no other crap in there. It's just what you need. Um, you know, the, obviously got the photos in there, so you know it's easy to post work um, and examples of it. So yeah, it's it's. I, I can't believe no one else has come up with this. How come you guys are so smart? <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, we'll see how we go. But look, it seems to be getting some good traction. So yeah, yeah. look, it's it's doing what it's meant to do at the moment. So we'll just uh, we'll see if it continues to grow and continues to build, which we hope it does. Um, yeah. And and so in terms of the actual development of the platform and everything, like what's what's gone into. Or what goes into building an app like this? I, I know I'm always fascinated to know what happens behind my screen. You know, I download an app, I pay $1.50 or it's a free app or whatever, and I think, I wonder what went into actually making that. Uh, what, what's been some of the lessons along the way, mate? Uh, yeah, look, it's a, it's been a bit of a journey, actually. Like, we... Um we, we were probably very similar to a lot of the other apps that are out there. Um, we started off thinking that we we're going to be quite transactional um, and we slowly built out our team. So we started off with a very bare bones MVP um, before we'd released it. We did a lot of customer testing here in Melbourne, um, running around harassing builders at pubs in their high beers, trying to get their <laughs> idea and going, what do you, what do you think of this? Yeah. I'll buy you a beer. Yeah. Um, I hey, I want you, you to look at something, mate. It's like, yeah, off, look, buddy. there was some interesting responses to that. It's like, I want you to look at something. I'll buy you a jug. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and some, some of the guys were, you know, quite, willing to to have a look at it um others basically told us to get lost so yeah, yeah. um a lot of research into trying to solve it um we actually did some ride-alongs with some plumbers as well uh mm-hmm. so we went and um did a sort of day in the life of and you know we came across all these different areas where we think that good work could potentially as a concept this is way before we'd even written a line of code could actually play a part um and those ride-alongs sitting in the car with tradies are so valuable because you start to get an understanding of what are the problems that mm. they have on a day-to-day basis what is a really what is a what are the, what are the issues what are the, the burning problems that they need to have solved or where technology could solve some of those problems so that's where we sort of really started way back when um, and then we sort of we were, we were fortunate enough to get a bit of venture funding and from there really we've set about building out a a development team. So we've got three developers. Um, Those guys have really um, done an amazing job in in building across two different code bases. So we're we're iOS and we're also Android. So um, so that's that's sort of no mean feat as well. Um, And then we've obviously then built out a a couple of designers um, and a marketing team to help us sort of position ourselves so that we get a bit of cut through. And Mm. um, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey, like different pivots along the way. Um, We've had some hypothesis um, absolutely busted um, along the way of things that we thought that were going to be valuable to trades, but they just (laughs) weren't at all. Um, So what what, what were some of those things, mate? Can you share? uh, Yeah. A really good, a good example of that is we had this hypothesis that, you know, We'll put an availability button on the um, on the profile, right? So it mm-hmm. says whether or not I'm available. Um, we started with that in mind, um, and basically where we ended up was we we did a whole bunch of testing on on availability, and traders just like, well, why would I ever turn that off? Yeah, um, so I don't, well, you know, so they're like, I want to be available all the time mm-hmm. so that I can say no to the work yeah. um, and it was something that you know from a digital point of view we thought oh yeah that makes sense letting people know that you're mm. available but actually you know trade is kind of funny that they're, they're always on um, and they will try and schedule in the work if they can mm. yeah. um, and that was a really great insight for us they, they'd rather say no to the work than not ever get contacted about it because mm. they're not available so mm. that's just one of the nuances and one of the little things that we've learned along the way about how work gets done and how tradies interact with each other mm. What's what's been some of the surprising outcomes from, uh, I guess, the soft launch? Because as we record this in December um, 2018, you've really only soft launched this um, this app, haven't you? Yeah. So we're we're really, I mean, we're only really 200 days in in um, in market, um, and we started off in Melbourne, and there's probably a really conscious effort. Um, 
to be take a really measured approach rather than sort of shotgun blast out to all of Australia. What we wanted to do was, um, look, a network's only as strong as the people who are on it. So we realised that actually the geography is quite important. So by launching in one place, we allow the network to build up, which means that the members are actually able to um, get value from that network. Yeah. Uh, and since then, we've sort of soft launched into New South Wales and soft launched into Queensland only this month. Um, and, you know, we've got a couple hundred people. But as that builds, because um, what we want to do is also meet expectations. There's nothing worse than jumping onto an app and going, oh, I'm looking for an electrician and I'm in Townsville and I can't find anyone. Yep. All of a sudden, we're not what we said we were going to be and we, the expectations aren't met. So yeah, we've yeah. tried to be really careful in the way that we message it as well. Let's say we're coming to that state or to that um, location soon. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, don't have your, um, have too high our expectation, but we are going to build uh, the network in those locations. So, um, yeah, at the moment we're sort of 5,500 members up the eastern seaboard, but looking to expand into other um, states uh, very soon. Mm. And what do you think is possible, Josh? I mean, obviously, uh, you're the CEO and, and co-founder, so you've probably got big vision, mate, and uh, everyone thinks you're crazy, but what's, uh, <laughs> what's the vision for good work and for this network around Australia? Um, look, I think the, the vision is to try and grow the network, um, obviously, to be Australia's largest, largest trading network. Um, and I think, importantly, is to sort of keep the integrity of that network as well, so making sure that um, you know, we can keep it as free um, for as long as possible. Mm. Uh, and I think that, you know, I mean, the bigger vision is like, is there the opportunity potentially to connect traders all over the world? Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, in the US, we see some interesting trends around trades where it doesn't have the same culture as Australia, mm. um, particularly in the UK as well. There, there are some, um, some apps that are springing up, but, you know, could good work be a, a global uh, product that connects tradies globally so that, you know, if you're a, if you're a Sparky and you want to move to the UK and do work there, you've already got a ready made network of people that you've connected with. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's where we'd love to get to, but, uh, yeah, who knows where it's going. So is that first quarter 2019, mate? Yeah, yeah basically. We're <laughs> like, like any good uh, CEO and, and founder, mate, or co-founder, I should get that right. It's like, well, can we do that next quarter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come yeah, on, guys team. Will kill, guys will kill me if I do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so any, uh, any tough lessons along the way? I know you've shared some of the, I guess, myths that have been busted, but um, what's what's been some of the the rocks along the road that you've stubbed your toe on, mate? Um, oh, look, we probably had a, we had an interesting learning about, um, we had some members early on. Uh, we just launched our push notification feature. Um, we had some members that probably hadn't been back in the app in the, in the first, oh, I think they hadn't been back in the app for about 40 days. We were looking at our data and we thought, oh, you know what, we'll send them a push notification and, uh, and we'll say, hey, we haven't seen you for a while. We've got more jobs on the app. Um, but I think one of the, the lessons that we learned was we pushed out the notification. The messaging wasn't quite right. Um, and we had sort of a, a mass uninstall as I would, a mass uninstall. <laughs> event as i would call it um we could see that we had about you know 40 or 50 guys that were like oh good work what's this app deleted us um and so that was probably yeah it was a bit uh it was a lesson it was like we need to get you got to get the messaging right and mm -hmm. um and the way in which we communicate has got to be on point as well um and it's got to drive value for members so that was probably one of the really early learnings that we got has it been a struggle josh tradies really have their own language um and I know one of my struggles early on coming into the building industry was understanding that language. And I would think from an app point of view, it's really important for you to have a handle on that language. Was that, was that a, a struggle in the beginning to really get across the way that they speak? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's still an ongoing um, struggle. I think the guys this week were talking about um, some of our developers when we were in some customer testing. And he said to me after the testing, he was like, what's chop out mean? I don't understand what he means by get, getting a chop out. And I'm like, oh, okay, getting someone to give him a hand. So we were like trying to explain that to one of our developers. And so, look, it is a continual sort of um, struggle, particularly because we're predominantly digital um, yes. and we haven't come from a tradie world. So uh, getting language right has been a bit of a challenge and will continue to be, um, but we're, we're working on it. Maybe yeah. maybe we could uh, you know get a group together and help put together a glossary of terms. <laughs> that would be excellent. Please do, <laughs> like a reference manual yeah, for people talking right. with when the trade. Says chop out. 
he means this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I want to come back to mindset a little bit. Um, you know, you you aren't a tradesman and, and you're not a tradie. That's, that's, is that correct? Yeah, look, I, I did dabble uh, once upon a time, though I will say that. Um, yeah, okay. So once upon a time uh, when I was a, a young fella, I, um, I, was, I, I started working my uncle's business, which was landscape gardening. Okay. Um, and I, I lasted about six months up until the point where we hit the Melbourne winter <laughs> and, uh, I just, I wasn't cut from the right stuff. And I like, I really enjoyed being on the tools, but once we hit winter, I'm like this working outdoors in like five yeah. degrees, this is no good in shorts. Yep. Um, cause all landscape gardeners wear shorts all year round. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, I thought, you know, yeah, bugger this. I think I need to get inside in the office job. So I'm not a tradie, but I had a bit of experience and I've got family members that are, that are trades people um, in the space. But uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Now, now, what I wanted to talk about was not outing you as a non-tradie because I'm, I'm a non-tradie <laughs> as well. I've never had a, a ticket or a license and I didn't do a trade, although I did, uh, I did provide uh, slave labor to my dad for many years in his building business. <laughs> um, but I guess, do you see a certain mindset um, – I, I don't really want to pigeonhole it into successful trade business owners and non-successful, but I guess, you know, if we're just going to cut to the chase here, like what are some of the, the key aspects that you see with the successful operators or the people who are, you know, getting better results in their trade business versus those that maybe are missing the mark? Yeah, look, I think there is what, at least what we're seeing is there's this certain mindset. It's I guess you'd call it a growth mindset where the guys are quite open to trying and testing and learning about sort of new business pr practices. And a really good, good example of that is the way that they'll adopt or, or have a crack at using new tech. Mm. Um, so we're seeing guys that are just sort of, you know, and the, the continual willingness to learn um, and explore. And also then there's the side that they take a lot of pride in their work. So um, they're probably the key things that we see guys that are continually willing to learn and evolve what they're doing um, from a business point of view, but then also then, taking great care and detail in the work that they do um, and the way that they treat their customers. They're probably the key things that we see uh, set a couple of them uh, apart from the rest. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, look, um, I I think the app is a kind of must-have, you know. It's like people say if you're a professional, you just have to be on LinkedIn. Um, you know, if you're a stalker, you have to be on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> and I think if you're a tradie and you've got a trade business, you just have to be on good work. It's, it's, you know, that's the way it's going to be. Um, so I think it's awesome, mate. And, and, uh, we're stoked to be, uh, talking about how, you know, good work and tradies in business can, uh, can do a little more stuff together. So listeners stay tuned for that. Um, but uh, I don't know, Coxie, you got anything else you want to grill Josh on? He's I had a pretty easy ride yeah, today, actually. Yeah, he has. We've, we've been very soft on you today, Josh. How about... <laughs> Thank you. <can> you do... <laughs> we've spoken a bit about your time as a landscaper. Tell us a bit more about what you were doing before Good Work, how you came to be in this position. Yeah, oh, great question. Um, so I think I've always had like, a little bit of a natural curiosity around um, businesses and different businesses, and I guess I kind of have... Um, come from predominantly a digital background. I spent a bit of time working for uh, uh, for Sportsbet. Um, mm -hmm. So that was probably where I really sort of cut my digital teeth. And um, as many of your listeners have known, they're, they're a huge company with um, a huge digital presence. And it was really good to learn about um, from about how business you leverages a mobile platform. So I, I sort of came from there, but also indirectly, I've been involved with a number of my own startups um, and startups that I co-founded with some other people. So I always sort of have this sort of entrepreneurial drive and mm -hmm. I'm always doing some type of a side hustle. Um, so yeah, when the, when the opportunity to, to sort of launch good work came along, I thought, right, I'll get stuck into this. And um, it sort of combined a lot of my skills from digital um, and my entrepreneurial drive. So, um, yeah, that's probably a bit of the background as to how we ended up here. And what do you think you'd be doing if you weren't working on good work? I think oh, I know the good, answer. Good question. Good question. Not I definitely landscaping. Wouldn't be a landscaping. <laughs> <laughs> gardener. Um, I don't know. That's a real look. I'd love to. It would have been nice. So I think. I think playing sport for a living is not mm. a bad a bad hobby. I reckon. Uh, look, if you you know. If you're going to do a job, what about professional surfer, endless summer, <laughs> um, going going to the best locations around the world, catching waves? Um, seems all right to me. I, I think it'd be all right. I'd, I'd do that, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Too many sharks for me. 
Oh, come on, Warwick. <laughs> yeah, no, just, uh, I don't think you just skip the... Uh, the J Bay. Yeah, J Bay. Skip that one. Yeah, I'm sick for that one. Yeah, and Bells. And we're in Fantasy World, and there's no sharks in Fantasy oh, yeah, World. Oh, okay, anyway. true. Yeah. <laughs> Don't they have repellent now or something? You just spray it all over yourself? Oh, I'm sure yeah, it works. Probably. Probably probably like crushed up sardines or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So, Future Vision, mate. So, I know we've talked about about good work and, and your, you know, vision to be the largest uh, tradie network, well, in the world. We'll just go for world domination. Josh, um, we'll put that <laughs> out there. I'm, I'm, if the team listen to this, they'll be like, Was shut up. He doesn't need any more ideas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah <laughs> but, but what do you think the future of trades um, and, and, and trade business looks like? Or, or the trades? You know, I talked to a few people that... I think they're they're probably a bit worried about automation and mechanization and technology and some of these things where you know we're seeing a lot of industries under a lot of pressure um, from tech basically where people are being done out of jobs by tech. Uh, mm. what, what's your view on the trades and, and what do you think's happening in the future? Yeah, I think maybe I think a lot of people get concerned about um, tech taking their jobs, and I think actually. It's kind of the flip side. It just, it actually, if you look at it as, as a positive, where um, all this automation means that you essentially have a lot more bandwidth to think um, and to do more things that are more important to you. It's just mm-hmm. making you more efficient. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think humans will, you know, everyone will naturally adapt to being able to, um, you know, to have more time to themselves. And it means, hopefully, it means that the automation means that you know you might be able to get away with only doing three hours. Um, a day worth of work versus you know a full a full day on the tools. So I think there's a lot of positives, um, but I certainly agree that there will be more automation coming. Um, I don't think you'll ever get you know you'll never fully replace the tradesman because um, things naturally break. But uh, um, I think there'll certainly be a lot of automation. But I think it's a positive more than a negative. I think um, if you think about it as well from a health perspective, it'll save a lot of tradies their backs and. Um, you know, from being on the tools for 30 years, lots of health pro- the problems that come with that. So I think there's lots of positives um, and probably very few negatives, but we'll just have to wait and see what it, what's in store. Mm. Yeah, cool. So any predictions for uh, the next couple of years, mate? Oh, well, I don't you, know. You, you did work for Sportsbet, mate. Everyone wants know to know the inside that. running, um, right? <laughs> look, I, just, I think you'll probably see... Um, you'll probably see a convergence of a few different trades. I think you'll see more multi, um, multidisciplinary tradies. So you'll see guys that are, you know, um, mm. from carpenters all the way through to plumbers, they do the, the, the range. Yeah. Um, you'll probably also see a lot of um, consolidation of businesses. So you'll see um, small businesses that are, you know, maybe one to five man operations merging together so that they can get a bit more scale and start competing against some of the big, bigger businesses. That's from probably more of a business perspective as well. Mm. Um, but they're probably my, my sort of only predictions at this stage. Yeah, cool, mate. Um, so is there, a, is there a way to actually do better with betting, given that you come from sports <laughs> bet, mate? Uh, the best thing, the best bet is not to bet. <laughs> Agreed. Um, <laughs> I'm sure sports bet would love to hear you saying that, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, the, the tip is don't bet. Yeah, um, yeah. So look, yeah, Hot probably tip. not. Look, usually, I like, will say this. Look, it's uh, it's definitely well and truly uh, stacked in the house's favour. Mm. House uh, wins, they right? are very good at they are very good at managing risk for profit. So let me just say that. <laughs> yeah, they're like insurance companies, mate. They're very good at uh, managing their margins. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, should we let him off the hook? I Foxy? think so. I yeah, think so. Right. You, you you did well there, you've, Josh. You've done pretty well, mate. So uh, we'll let you back on the awesome. show again Thanks, one guys. day. <laughs> but mate, that was awesome. Um, uh, I guess you know the the important thing now is someone's listening to this, going, "Okay, I get it. I get it. I should be on good work. Where the bloody hell do I find it, and what do I do now?" Uh, yeah, that's a, a great question. We are in both the iOS and Android app stores. Um, you can just search "good work." Um, and good work is one word, um, all one word, so good work, uh, and will pop up in the app store and you can just download us. As I said, it takes about a minute and a minute plus to set up a profile. And it is F-R-E-E free. Correct, 100% free. Everybody's favourite app. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mate, uh, awesome to have you on the show. Um, we've we've uh, we've finally got you here. I don't know we've we've had a couple of false starts, so uh, yes. you're busy, busy man. And um, and yeah, super stoked with uh, with what you're doing there and with the app. I think it's a fantastic initiative, and anything that pulls the trades together in Australia and certainly globally, um, and and gives them more of a voice, um, and and I guess just gets them more noticed mm. by you know regulators, government, um, you know even sort of banking sector, insurance companies, all that sort of stuff. I think it's it's got to be a good thing, and it's going to be good for our listeners. It's going to be good for your members um, and good for, for for the trades in this country so mate well done and uh, thank you for your time today thanks very much for having me guys cheers pleasure thanks josh so i think we've found a solution to the sausage fingers yep <laughs> <laughs> and it's not cutting them off or anything like that <laughs> you, I, can you get a little thing that you stick on the end of your finger like a can't little you get a wanky stylus, stylus yeah. but then you gotta that's something else to lose that's right, right. another thing you gotta hold while you're trying to hold the drill and the hammer and the piece of paper and talk mm-hmm. to somebody over there, you know, mm-hmm. too much. All right. So moving on from sausage fingers, um, <laughs> I think the biggest thing is it's it's networking mm. with other trades without leaving your ute or your job site or your couch or anything. And it's real time. There's photos of work. Um, you know, you can talk rates and availability mm-hmm. and all the stuff that – makes it hard when you desperately need a plasterer or a tiler or who, whatever it is, mm. um, any trade that you need. Uh, and it's and it's like glaziers and everything, uh, which Pest is one of the things that he said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was thinking about a bunch of my wingman clients. It's like, they all need to be on here because I know they complain to me about it. Look, I think it's the way forward. And I think if you're not there early, you're going to miss a really important boat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the way of the future, I suppose. You know, if you can network on your smoko break from the comfort of your telephone, it and, just makes sense to me. And book someone in. Absolutely. Like it just makes it so much easier. So, And as Josh said, you know, um, the younger set are using things like WhatsApp and everything to communicate. Mm. Uh, and good work is really, you know, it is that sort of LinkedIn, WhatsApp sort of thing for trades. It's got a real Facebook feel to it too. So, you know, mm. I'm thinking about the builder and he preferred Facebook, LinkedIn, they're his yeah. go-to yep. for social media. This is really easy to use. That, mm. that I think that's what I like about it. It's really easy to use, works for your sausage fingers. But really <laughs> at the end of the day, it just gives you that opportunity to do that important stuff you need to do as a business owner. Small, big, large, doesn't matter. You can find what you need right there in one app. So uh, get on it, uh, do some good work with good work. Love it. Oh, I really should sell them that slogan, hey? Corny. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, go check it out. Um, best way to do that is in the iOS or the Android app stores, so the Apple or the Android app stores. Uh, just search good work, all one word. You will see the app. It is free to download and it is a piece of cake to set up a minute or two to set up your profile and you're away. Um, you would be uh, hooking up with other trades. kind of like Tinder for tradies, isn't it? I don't think there's any swiping. Mm. <laughs> Make sure you pop on by the group. Let us know whether you've joined or not. Uh, if you have joined, let us know what you think. If you haven't joined, let us know why. Mm. Yeah, give us some feedback. Um, head over to Facebook. Tradies in Business, and uh, thanks for listening. Thanks. You've been listening to the Tradies in Business podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business, and other cool stuff at tradiesinbusiness.com.au.